Welcome to our lecture on chapter seven, digital genres and modes uh, from the digital writer textbook. Uh, we're gonna talk about different modes and purposes and shapes of and types of writing in this um, PowerPoint here. So um, when we're talking about different genres, we're referring to different <clears throat> categories of documents that you might write. And when we're speaking digitally, we're looking at maybe a digital memo, emails for sure, websites, videos, et cetera. You're going to be creating some of these different modes the next project that you will be starting. Um, the mode refers to the purpose for your writing. So all these things are connected. Your purpose, the mode, the genre, all of those things you need to keep in mind when you're developing a piece of writing. So here are some different types of modes. Um, we have, first of all, argumentation. Argumentation is when you are writing something and you are making a claim about your opinion and that is supported with reasons ev and evidence for why an audience should accept the opinion as accurate. Um, not all writing falls into the category of argumentation. But a lot of times you are writing to try to prove a point, to try to convince your audience of something using supporting evidence so that they know that you are a credible source. Another type we have is narration. Narration is simply telling a story about some event. Uh, for example, summer vacation, a soccer tournament, a crime that was committed. Um, so think about like news shows, they are they're narrating, they're telling stories about things that have happened in the world or in the community. Um, often these can start with an anecdote, which provides the details of a short incident, uh, often used to provide evidence towards some other purpose, such as argumentation or exposition. So a lot of times if someone is writing a longer document, um, they'll start with this, a short narration or a short anecdote to try to engage the audience or the reader. We also have biographies and autobiographies as a form of narration. These both narrate the events of a person's life. And then lastly, we have storytelling. This is narration that can be used simply to entertain an audience. So um, when we think about some types of podcasts, I'm thinking specifically um, like a true crime podcasts, um, they are telling an event but they're also in entertaining for an audience. I know that's kind of grim and morbid, but it is true. True crime has a huge following. We also have description. This is when we're um, recreating sensory experiences through written language. So whenever we're describing what we smelled or what we saw, what we touched, what we tasted, what we heard, um, that is descriptive writing. Classification also falls under the umbrella of descriptive writing. This is when we're sorting objects into groups based on similar characteristics. So if a doctor was um, writing something, he might or she might classify different types of diseases and the effects that they have on the body. Comparing and contrasting is another type of description. This is simply analyzing how things are similar two or different from one another. Exposition. Exposition is uh, more nonfiction writing. It's used to teach the audience about some situation in order to further a claim. So things like um, a new policy that the college might be instituting or your workplace might be instituting or how to complete a certain task. Um, another form of exposition is kind of writing about a definition, often writers have to explain a term to their readers um, so that they can understand it in a precise way. And then that kind of ties into exemplification that is illustrating that through examples. So a lot of times in writing, you'll see someone define a specific term and then share some examples to kind of cement that idea into the reader's head. And then lastly, there's cause and effect. So this explains why an event occurred and what effects have come from it. And again, all of these expository types of writing are, are nonfiction in nature. So when we're talking about genres, um, certainly we can have a expository essay, a descriptive essay, a narr narrative or an argument piece, um, business letters, 
menus, movie reviews, novels, obituaries, poems, picture books, so on and so forth. All of those are traditional print types of genres. Um, and we use those different modes in each type of genre that we use. When we're talking about digital writing, um, the genres are a little bit different. So we have websites, we can use hypertext that is like code, um, navigation we have to think about and other types of web code, blogs, uh, which is what we're gonna be focusing on this unit. We also have emails, social media, text messages, memes and avatars. So lots of different types of genres of digital writing. We're honing in on blogs. So here's some more on them. Um, one of the most frequent type of websites developed by authors um, who are not professional web developers. For example, I am not a professional web developer. I have a blog. Lots of my friends also have blogs and they are not professional web developers. Um, there are a wide variety of web publishing platforms. For this class, we're going to be using Weebly, but certainly other people use WordPress, Blogger, Tumblr, et cetera, just as frequently. I, I use Weebly for my own personal blog. Usually blogs are focused on one particular topic or discipline. So as you're thinking about the blog that you're going to write for this course, think about an overarching topic that you might want to focus on. Um, this helps attract readers who are more engaged and interested in the content the author is writing about. For example, my personal blog is mainly inspirational or devotional type messages. It is very kind of religious in nature. And those are the people that read it. Um, so it is, it's very focused. The, the things that I write about are all different, but the main topic, the overarching idea is the same. Blogs can also come in the form of video. Those are called vlogs. You will also be playing around with those um, during this unit. And then we also have microblogs. So where we just use a few characters to convey a message like Twitter or Tumblr. One thing to keep in mind when we're talking about blogs um, are tags and categories. Both tags and categories help us organize our material so our reader can um, you know, navigate it easily and form a logical relationship. So a tag is something very specific. It focuses on a particular figure, keywords, and examples that fit into the broader categories. Categories cluster information according to a group or topic. Um, this may differentiate the kind of material in your blog. And usually we limit things to four or six uh, categories. So if I'm writing a blog on um, kidney disease and I need a category, maybe my category is going to be like diseases, my tags are going to be more specific. So if, I, if someone is searching for um, information on kidney disease, my tags are going to help my blog come up in a search. So I might tag the word kidney, I might tag the word disease, I might tag um, a specific uh, person that I mentioned in the article, but your tags are more specific, your categories are, are very general. Here is uh, an example of that. So you can see that the blog has a, a title, the date, who it's written by, comments, um, and then you can see the category there and um, whatever is tagged would be the more specific things that the blog talks about. And that concludes our PowerPoint on chapter seven. Uh, we will be getting more into blogs, vlogs, and you'll also be creating an infographic. Be sure to email me if you have any questions.